Welcome to Friday's Digest podcast, season one, episode number six. Today, I would like to touch on the subject of what computer should we buy as a doctor or a scientist. And we're going to touch on four topics. The first one will be, is a laptop better than a desktop? The second one will touch on the question whether Apple computer is better than a Windows computer or the other way around. Third subject will be, should we pay more and upgrade the memory, the hard drive, and the processor? And lastly, we're going to touch on the question, should we save money and buy an older model? Okay, so when it comes to choosing a new computer, what do we usually do? First option is we just buy a newer version of the computer we already have. We want something familiar, we don't want to go into all the details and to start comparing other models or other brands. So we just go with the new model. Second option was we ask our nerdy friend what to buy. Third option is we spend hours over hours reading reviews on the internet. So what are the downsides? If we buy a newer version of what we already have, we are probably missing better and cheaper alternatives. If we ask our nerdy friend what to buy, our nerdy friend doesn't necessarily have the same needs and budget as we do. If we spend hours reading reviews on the internet, the problem is that the internet is packed, packed with sponsored and paid reviews. They don't necessarily have your best interest in their minds and the reviews are usually short term. Even take the long-term reviews, there are just one month old reviews. You don't really know what will happen in the years to come. This is where our podcast today comes for the rescue, okay? First, I've been using laptops, tablets, and desktop computers for science and medicine for about 20 years. I spend tons, tons of time online finding the best systems because these computers are extremely important to what I do. Take, for example, image processing as part of my research. I need to have very specific specs of a computer to get what I need. And on the way, I find out a lot of things about other computers in the market, even these that I didn't eventually buy. Third, You can consider me your nerdy friend if you don't have one. And lastly, I have absolutely no hidden motives in getting you to buy a certain computer. I have no financial incentives in this newsletter, in this podcast. No tech company cares about this newsletter or or the newsletter for doctors and scientists. So you can go ahead and buy a donkey with a typing machine tied on its back. I, I don't care. Okay, do whatever you want. I have no incentives, okay? Yeah, so let's get to it. Again, let's remember the four topics of today's podcast. Is a laptop better than a desktop? Second question will be Apple versus Windows. Third topic would be, should we pay more and upgrade the memory when we buy the computer and, or upgrade the hard drive or upgrade the processor? And lastly, we're going to touch on the question, should we save money and go for an older version? Okay, like a year old version. So let's start with the first question. Is a laptop better than a desktop? Is a laptop computer better than a desktop computer? Short answer, yes. A laptop as a single computer is better than a desktop computer. Why? Doctors and scientists are constantly on the move. Even if we have an office, we are giving lectures and we go to meetings and we love to brainstorm over a cup of coffee outside our office and taking a laptop with us is a great option. I know that some of us prefer to have a desktop computer and a laptop, but with all the great laptops that you nowadays have, why spend twice as much on two computers and also always worrying about needing to copy and transferring files between your computers even if you use Google Drive or Dropbox or any other cloud service that syncs between your computers, it's always an issue. If you have a single computer, you never have to worry about it. You just take it and you know that everything is there. Some of you may hear that and think a laptop is not capable 
of handling everything that a desktop computer can. It's not as high end, it is limited. The fans start to work and you know, it's, everything is constricted. How can you compare a laptop to a desktop computer that has more power and more space for the fans and everything? So that has changed over the last two to three years. And we'll touch that in our next sections. Take home message for number one. Again, number one is a laptop better than a desktop. Take home message, buy one laptop. At your home or your office or both, you can have a screen, a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse waiting for you. All you need to do is to connect a single USB cable to your computer and you're done. You're all set. You can even take your computer, close the lid and just let it sit on a stand on the side of your desk. It wouldn't take any space and it will work great. Just one laptop. Second topic. Apple versus Windows computer. A little bit of background. I've been using Windows computers since 1993. Okay, that was Windows 3.11, I think. And I've been using the Apple system since 2010. Firstly, with the iPad, I had the first iPad. And then I also started using the Apple laptops or the MacBooks. For many years, I had a very, very strong preference for Windows computers. There were two main reasons for that. The first one was compatibility issues. There were just certain softwares that don't run on Apple computers, so I had to have a Windows computer. And the second reason was that Apple computers always cost more than Windows computer. That was in the past. But then came the M1 Apple Silicon processor and everything changed. Apple computers became extremely powerful. They consume much less power and their price is significantly lower than their competition. Just go back to the first YouTube videos that reviewed the M1 processor, the new Apple computers with the M1 processor and just see the shocked expressions on their faces when they tested the most basic Apple M1 computer that was the MacBook Air, which just cost $1,000 and they compared it to high-end, much more expensive Windows Intel computers and there was no competition, no competition. They even compared it to a year old Apple computers with an Intel processor and not the M1 processor and computers that cost four times as much lost to the most basic M1 Apple laptop. The Apple computers did it all faster, better, no fan noise, and with insane battery life of around 18 hours, okay, between 16 and 18 hours. That's insane. There is no real competition anymore. I used Windows computers for decades, and they crashed on me, froze, caused me to lose data, and wasted me hundreds of hours. My M1 Apple laptop hasn't crashed, not a single crash, never froze, never caused me to lose data since I bought it around January 2021. So it's more than two and a half years. Not a single crash, single freezing, never. It's ready to go within one second. I just lift the lid and everything is ready to go. It does everything from simple tasks all the way to image processing. And I'm talking about very, very demanding image processing as part of my research. And lately I've started to edit videos for my YouTube channel. I don't take my charger with me and I simply don't think about my computer. It just does the job. Take a message for topic number two, topic number two, mind you, it's Apple versus Windows or so a take home message, unless you have a software that exists only on Windows, M1 or M2 Apple computer is my recommendation. I recommend it to my parents and I recommend it to power users alike. That brings us to topic number three, which is should I pay more and upgrade the memory, hard drive and processor? You, you know that moment where you finally decided on the model and got to the cart, online cart, or even if you went to a physical store 
And then they ask you, okay, how much memory do you want? How much space do you need on your hard drive? Do you want to upgrade the processor? And sometimes it can cost hundreds of dollars, sometimes even a thousand dollars to upgrade it. So let's break it into three. Let's talk about the memory, the hard drive, and the processor. Let's make it simple. First, internal memory. As of August 2023, the time of this podcast, I recommend 16 gigabytes of internal memory. 16 gigabytes of internal memory. If you are performing extremely demanding tasks, go for the 32 gigabytes. You would know if your tasks are demanding, okay? If you don't know, it means that 16 gigabytes is enough. Hard drive. In order to know how much space you need on your hard drive, you want to calculate the current storage you're using right now on your current computer. Just take a look on your hard drive. And please don't include all those pictures and videos you haven't looked on for years. Just download them on external hard drive, buy two external hard drive and download all the images and videos on both of them. This way, if one of them crashes, you'll have the second one. You don't need to keep it on your computer. You don't need to pay every single time to have more storage just to keep those images that you never look at. So calculate the current storage space that you are using. And in order to know how much you want on your next computer, your new computer, just double it. For example, if you're currently using 220 gigabytes, double it, you get 440. It means that you can go with a 512 gigabytes option for your hard drive. If you have any doubt, just go for the next number up. For example, if you got around 600 gigabytes, then go for the 1,000, okay? Don't go with the 500. A good rule of thumb, you want to invest your money in the hard drive, not the internal memory. It's much better to have more hard drive space because you will always need it in the future. In the future, you will have bigger images, bigger videos, software will take up much more of your hard drive, get a bigger hard drive. Processor. So we have the Intel processors and we have the Apple Silicon processors. If you go with Intel, usually you can go with the mid-range. For example, if you have the i3, i5, i7, and i9, the i9 being the high end of these, you can go with the i5. In most cases, if you do more demanding tasks, go with the i7. But again, if you compare even the high-end Intel processor, the Apple M1 will just beat it any single day. The Apple processor is much, much better. So if you have to go with a Windows computer, go with the mid-range Intel. If you need high demanding tasks, of course, you need to go with a higher-end Intel processor. In case you're going with an Apple computer, you'll have two options, the M1 and M2, silicon Apple processors. Don't, don't go for the older models Intel processor inside Apple computers. Just don't, don't do that, okay? You have the M1 and M2 options. M1 can do pretty much everything, okay? You can just get an M1 processor computer, Apple computer, and it will serve you for many years to come. If you want to go for a newer model for other reasons, for example, a larger screen or more ports, you have an HDMI port that you don't have in an older model, then you can go with the M2 because that will be your only option. But if you have the option M1 versus M2, M1 can do pretty much everything. Take home message. So for internal memory, go with 16 gigabytes. For hard drive, go with twice the storage you're currently using. If you have any doubt, just take the next level up. With processor, Apple M1 will do everything you need and more. I use it for absolutely everything. And for Intel, you can go with the mid-range and go with the high range only if you deal with high-end image processing and very demanding tasks. And you would know if you do these highly demanding tasks. Okay, that brings us to our last topic, topic number four. Should I save money and buy an older model? It depends on your budget and it depends on your needs. If you just need a very basic computer, by basic I mean something that you'll use for browsing and the internet, sending emails, word processing, and PowerPoint presentations, 
M1 MacBook Air that costs around $1,000. You can get it even for less for $900. Will be a wonderful, wonderful choice that will serve you for many, many years. However, I wouldn't recommend getting an old model if you're going for an Intel Windows computer. These become really slow after two or three years. So if you buy a one or one and a half year old computer, you don't have many years to enjoy it before it becomes significantly slower. Take home message. I recommend you'll get an older Intel Windows computer only if it comes with a substantial discount compared to the newer model. By substantial, I mean at least 35% less. For example, if you have a $1,200 computer, it should cost less than $800 for an older model for you to get it. And with Apple, Apple Silicon M1, you can save tons of money and enjoy it for years. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to touch on today. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great weekend.